Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well, then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. In recent years, as social media has become more of a platform for digital creators, including those in my space in accounting and taxes, we've seen more business advice being shared on social media in the name of education, right? But there's a lot of flash. There's a lot of, we'll say, exaggeration. And it's not necessarily their fault. I always say it's really tough to cram in all the fine print into 90 seconds or a minute. And this is really marketing collateral. So keep that in mind. So when you see these social media clips broadcasting tax strategies, like the one we're going to talk about today, which is hiring your kids, you're going to see a lot of the upside to it right? They're not going to tell you about the process to get it done. For example, when you're exploring a cruise or a trip to the Bahamas or a trip to a tropical island, even Costa Rica, right? You want to explore a trip to Costa Rica? Well, guess what? Uh, The marketing is going to be how wonderful Costa Rica is. It's not going to be footage of you getting in the TSA line. It's not going to be footage of you packing a bag. It's not going to be footage of you, you know, putting your tray table up. (laughs) It's not going to be footage of the, you know, the taxi and takeoff of the airplane and waiting in customs. You're not going to be told about that experience because you're going to be shared the benefits of that experience, which is all of this you'll put up with because you know that on the other side of this is going to be such an amazing time with your family, with your friends in a new place, right? And why I say that is understand that when it comes to marketing, when it comes to the story that these sort of clips and TikToks and reels are telling, they're selling you the island. They're selling you the destination. They're not selling you the trip. And what I'm here to do is kind of tell you three things that you can do to hire your kids the right way so that you're not shortcutting the process. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because I've seen the implementation of hiring your kids done at you know new clients, people I've talked to, other business owners who are working with other CPAs, professionals, tax accountants, and they're implementing it incorrectly. And I know this for a fact because, you know, I've been through audits. I've seen audits. My colleagues have seen audits where all of this has been disallowed, where at the end of the day, you know, it's all for nothing or it's not worth it. So I want to share with you the real, real on hiring your kids, whether it actually makes sense for you and the things you should be asking and considering before you undertake the strategy. So let's dive in. Number one, be careful with hiring your kids under your S corporation if you have an S corporation. There's an additional step here that will help save you in payroll taxes, which is to establish some type of family management company because ideally, in an ideal world, you want your kids to be paid out of an LLC or sole proprietorship owned by one or both parents. The simplest approach is a sole proprietorship owned by one parent. That would make it a lot easier from an administrative and tax filing standpoint. Now, this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but what you have to do, there's a lot of logistics here, right? So that means that you have to have, like, let's say you have an S corporation. If I have an S corporation and I have a kid, I have to then have like the Weinstein family management company, right? That will pay the kid. And then I would pay the management company a fee, kind of like an agency. Think about like a temp agency or a labor agency service. You're going to pay the sole prop. The sole prop is going to pay the kid. What does this mean? It means you have to have a bank account for the sole prop, a bank account for the kid, a bank account for your S Corp, right? So now you've got all these different bank accounts, these different identities possibly are identifiers to to actually, and these different business entities you're actually going to be setting up and you're going to be managing. You're also going to need to have some type of agreement between the companies, right? So there's a lot of infrastructure that has to go into place to make sure the kid gets paid by the right source. So A lot of people overlook this and they just throw their kid on W-2 in their existing payroll for their S-Corp. You are going to not realize nearly as much tax savings if you do this, because if you are paying them through an S-Corporation, they're going to incur more payroll taxes. Understand that. The other thing to consider 
is just the amount of effort that goes into planning all of this and making sure that you're doing it the right way, that they're getting paid out of there. And not to mention, by the way, payroll services. So now your S, your excuse me, your S corporation is already paying a payroll service. Let's say they're using Gusto or QuickBooks, or whatever it is, paychecks, net checks, ADP, right? You're paying your payroll service. Now you also have to have a payroll for your sole proprietorship so you can pay the kid because you're going to be paying them via W-2, not 1099, by the way. So the biggest point I want to make here is don't use your S-Corp to pay them directly if you want to maximize your tax savings. Understand that you're going to want to pay them out of some type of sole proprietorship or single member LLC, even a multi-member LLC, but that's not necessary. And you want to make sure that all of the cash is flowing the right way. And that will help you realize the most tax savings. Now, along those lines, tip number two, please have contracts in place that lay out all of this. So contracts in place, by this I mean a couple of things. One is you need to have a contract in place between your management company, aka the sole proprietorship, and your S corporation. So you need to make sure that you are you have an agreement, you have a contract between those two entities to show that you're hiring the sole prop as a labor source. You you really, even though, I'm going to be like, I'll be honest, even though the IRS probably knows this is what people are doing, right? They know that you're basically just hiring your kid and trying to get tax savings, right? The more you can substantiate the legitimate relationship and the legitimate setup of what you've created so that it, there's a distance between the two entities, they have a contract in place, the terms are laid out in terms of what services they will provide, the terms are laid out in terms of how, that, how, when, and how much they get paid, right? So all of these different terms will come into play. Now, this is really important because this can help just support the legitimacy of what it is you're doing. There's a lot of planning that goes into this strategy. So you want to have the right contracts in place between the two entities if you have to establish two entities to be able to take advantage of this. Now, I should go back and say, if you don't have an S-Corp, you just have a sole prop, that's fine. You can pay them out of your sole prop, and that is super simple. But if you have the S-Corporation, it does complicate it a little bit. It's not not, not doable. It's just going to be one extra step, right? One extra detour, one extra stop on the airline and a layover, not nonstop. So have the right contracts in place. And this also includes, by the way, a job agreement between the entity that pays the kid, which would be the sole prop in the case of an S-Corp or just your sole prop or your LLC, would pay the kid. And you have to have a job agreement and you have to be really clear about what their duties are. This is a big thing. And you have to be really clear about how, when, how much they get paid and lay all that out there so that it's able to be supported by something in writing. And it's going to sound so funny, but just putting it in writing and defining it and setting that expectation can go a long way in an audit. I'm telling you, those who come prepared with all of this set up versus those that don't win 100% of the time that I've seen. And if it's all legit, and there's legitimate job duties, and they have the job descriptions, and they have the agreements, it's all cool. You want to treat it the same as any other employee. The other thing, the last thing, number three, that you need to have in place is you need to be planning what job duties the kid can do. And the the job duties have to be legitimate. They have to be age appropriate, and they have to be at a rate of pay that's appropriate for the work. So I'll give you a couple examples. So let's say you have a kid And I'm going to do a couple of examples, one that's older, one that's younger. So in case you have little ones and you want to do this, you're trying to think of what to do, right? I think, so let's go through like, I don't know. And by the way, I don't have kids. So I have no idea what age kids become useful in a business. But let's think about it. So let's say they're in their, I don't know, like they're like 10, eight to 10 years old or something. They clearly can't drive yet, right? So that's not going to work. They may not be savvy with social media yet. At least I hope not by now. I have no idea. But maybe eight to 10 years old, they can help you with filing. They can help you with general office work. They can help you clean up a little bit. They can help you with, I don't know, you know, little tasks here and there around the office, greeting, getting snacks, you know, stuff like that. So if they're able to do all all things like that, you have to be thinking about what would it cost me to hire someone to do these exact tasks that the kid is doing? And Just because you can pay up to, in this case, 2023, $13,850 to to hire the kid, that doesn't mean that, you know, you can pay that necessarily. doesn't mean that the kid has earned that much money. So what's important is 
that you're paying a rate of pay commensurate with the type of work they do and their age and their skill level. So if you're hiring like a six-year-old, you're not going to pay them, you know, a thousand dollars a month typically, right? How much would a six-year-old actually make? You have to be conscious of labor laws, by the way, in this, but you have to look at what is actually appropriate for the kid. Like, what would I actually pay them legit? And do they have the capacity to earn $13,850 this year? Maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe, maybe not. And it would be very surprising to me. And it would definitely get questioned in an audit, I would think, if you had like a five-year-old, six-year-old who was making the maximum amount there, the $13,850. And by the way, when I say maximum amount, I just mean the maximum, like the standard deduction. That's really the, the goal here is to pay them the equivalent of this year's standard deduction, which goes has been going up every year. Right now it's 13850 and it will probably go up again in 2024. Who knows? But the goal is to pay them that or less so they don't have to file a tax return and also so they don't have to pay taxes. But if they make more than that over the course of the year, they're going to have to file a return and pay taxes. So part of the whole strategy is to keep them under that radar. So if you want to pay them $13,000, you have to be able to support why that's reasonable. Why is that a reasonable amount of pay for the kid? And let's talk about your, you know, 16 or 17 year old, because this is ideal if they're under 18, right? So if you're talking about a 16, 17 year old, now we're talking about somebody who can drive, someone who could help load the car up, who could run errands for you, right? They're, they are much higher value to you. So as they are become more useful, have more utility in your business, then they're going to command a higher salary, maybe be able to work for you more often, maybe have more hours available and you know, less reliance on you where they can actually do work. They can do your social media, they can do digital type of work. This would be huge. So keep that in mind as well, that they can you know, do a little bit more work the older they get. And this is a strategy by hiring your kids to do work in your business that can be very lucrative for you if you're able to take advantage of it. But I want to just give you guys the real talk on this because so many people did this or did the surface level of it, right? They'll, they'll send the W-2 in for the kid, but didn't do any of these like documentation requirements or actually set up the duties or really think about what the kid was going to do. They just paid them a thousand bucks a month, right? And had nothing in place. They just shifted money a thousand bucks a month and had no real backup for it. This is what will screw you in an audit because the IRS knows people are doing this. They know that they're trying to apply this type of strategy, but it's more about the substance than the strategy. It's did you actually pay them for legitimate work that they did? That is what you have to prove. So when you're using the strategy, I'm not saying this is an audit trigger by far. I'm saying that if you were to get audited, if you were to get looked at, this is definitely something that could get picked up because people are aware that there's this advice going around on the internet about hiring your kids and that people aren't really documenting it well because it's a lot of high maintenance stuff. Because I mean, you're probably exhausted from this episode already hearing about all the stuff you have to do to be able to take advantage of it. And I'm going to go back to my point one more time on hiring your kid and paying them a fair wage for what they're doing. Think about this. The kid is young and you come up with, I'm just making stuff up, but let's say you come up with five or 10 bucks an hour, maybe five bucks an hour for them to be doing certain work. And I know like maybe there's a minimum wage thing. Maybe I don't know. But let's just use five bucks an hour as an example for a young child. And you pay them that much money and that's fine. But how many hours are they really working in a given week? And, you know, <laughs> what's the maximum earning potential of that, right? And at a certain point you go, okay, wait a minute. So Shan, what you're saying is if I pay them even 10 bucks an hour and they work for me a few hours a week, right? 52 weeks in a year and they work for me, I don't want to do mental math, but they work for me and they make even $100 a week, right? If you're paying them $100 a week and they work for 52 weeks out of the year, now we're talking about, you know, $5,200. If I'm only paying them $5,200 and I have to set up payroll, I have to set up all these contracts, I have to do all this time tracking. I have to set up a reasonable pay. I have to do all this maintenance and all this structuring. And $5,200, by the way, is the deduction, not the savings. So what you're actually saving is probably $1,000. And so my question to you is, at that point, is it worth $1,000? Like, would you rather just pay the $1,000 in taxes and avoid all of this? 
And for many entrepreneurs, the answer is, yeah, I would rather just not worry about this until it is impactful for my business. So one of my biggest things I would tell you is if you are considering hiring your kids in your business, before you do anything, before you put this on your tax return, before you decide to sign yourself up for this, let's make sure it's actually lucrative. Let's make sure it actually makes sense for you in your business. And, you know, it's a really, really good exercise to go through some type of calculation to figure out, okay, how much can I legitimately save by hiring my kids realistically? And I would encourage you to go through that exercise anytime and be able to predict basically how much you could actually save from hiring your kids and use that as a basis to decide if you want to pursue it. All right. Well, I hope you found this helpful in getting some tips on hiring your kids the right way. And please share this episode with anyone you think could benefit from it. I always appreciate you sharing the show and telling more people about it so more people can keep more of what they earn. I can't believe how many episodes we've released of Keep What You Earn. There are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in tax savings contained in our episode library. And there are so many topics that we cover. To make it easier to find more of what you need right now, we actually created a custom curated playlist just for you. That's right, a playlist of value-packed episodes that you're looking for based on your goals right now in your business. Whether you're making your first sale, trying to strategize your taxes, or you're scaling your team, there is something here for everyone. Check out the podcast playlist generator now using the link in the show notes and explore your custom playlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.